Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the 2024 Tiny New York Apartment Studio Tour. We've got a lot to cover, uh, a few new pieces of gear that have been quite impactful, uh, several changes to the workflow since last time. Probably most notably actually is this edition. Um, this is my new studio assistant, Jelly. Say hi, Jelly. Uh, she is a pretty tough critic, um, usually tells me that the mixes are not sounding very good but uh, that leads me to become better in the end, so I appreciate it nonetheless. So overall, we've got a few different categories of changes here. We've got monitoring device changes, we've got instrument changes, we've got plug-in changes, we've got outboard gear changes, uh, quite a few changes to the workflow that have made quite a difference, so let's go ahead and get into those. All right, so let's go over the guitars. Um, if you're familiar with my music at all, you'll know that I'm primarily a guitarist. Just finished tracking uh, a new EP with the guitars that I'm gonna show today. First off, we've got my Kiesel six string, the Kiesel Aries in blue. This is my dream guitar, my favorite guitar. I've had it for five or six years. Still sounds absolutely amazing. It's used all over the new EP. Uh, then we've got the Kiesel DC seven string multi-scale neck through guitar. Uh, this is also an absolutely amazing guitar. Uh, it's used on pretty much all the rhythm uh, guitars on the new EP and sounds absolutely fantastic. Over here, we've got the latest addition to my lead guitar setups. Uh, I also use this on a lot of background guitars, but it makes a great lead guitar. You can hear that on the new track, Panoramic. But yeah, this is the Strandberg Prog 6. It sounds absolutely fantastic unbelievably comfortable to hold. I've got a full review on this guitar if you want to check that out. Uh, behind that, we've got the Godan six string. Uh, I have not used this one in recordings too much recently, but it's still a nice guitar for background stuff. Uh, then we've got the first guitar that I got that I would consider a real guitar. Um, that's my Mexican made Fender Stratocaster. Behind that, we've got the six string Ibanez Geo bass guitar. Uh, I use that for all of the bass on the newest EP and the previous EP. Then behind that, we've got my Taylor Acoustic. I believe it's a 100 CE, but I'll correct that on screen if not. Um, now let me bust out my newest guitar that is a little bit different. So this is my newest guitar. It's by a company called Traveler. Uh, you can see that here. This thing is obviously super different, super weird. I would never record with this, but it is intended for just what you would think. It's for travel. It has this detachable uh, rest here so that you can be a little bit more comfortable and ergonomic using it, but um, you can actually throw it into this carrier bag and use it as a carry-on item on a plane. So I've gone on a couple trips where I brought this with me where I needed to uh, rehearse for an upcoming music video that we were shooting and just use this to stay fresh for a couple weeks while I was traveling. So this thing is pretty crazy. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you wanna check it out. So the desk setup usually comes in two different forms. If I am in writing mode, I usually have this keyboard here, which as you can tell kind of takes up a lot of the desk space, um, but it's such a useful composition tool that kind of needs something that is really high quality and works well for that. Um, so I'll show the desk with this and without it. When it's without it, I'm usually in recording mode uh, for guitars or I'm in mixing mode where I'm not really relying on the keyboard as a composition tool. But this is a Casio Tone uh, keyboard. I'll throw up the exact model number on the screen, but this is a new addition and this thing is excellent for a couple of primary reasons. One, uh, it does have a slightly lower form factor. So I'm still able to reach my outboard gear, most importantly, my Axe FX. Um, so while I'm writing, I can use my guitar and also use the keyboard to compose. Secondly, most MIDI keyboards don't actually have speakers included. You can't just play a note and hear anything. Uh, so as a composition tool, that's not super helpful. I don't want to have to throw on a uh, virtual instrument to be able to hear what I'm playing. So I wanted to get a keyboard that is first and foremost an actual good keyboard that is playable and secondly um, I can control the volume on it. So I can easily turn that down 
uh, when I'm using a virtual instrument, but when I'm just composing on the fly, I'm trying to figure out a note or figure out what chord I want to come next in the song, I can actually just play the keyboard, which is obviously very helpful. Okay, so now we've got the desk in more of a recording and mixing format. Obviously, I've removed the keyboard at this point, which also gives full access to the outboard gear. Um, so let's talk about a couple of additions to uh, monitoring setup now. Um, so I've made a few changes here. Uh, most notably, I've added these Head 7 monitors. Uh, before I was using KRK Rocket 5s. This is a massive upgrade and has made an absolutely huge difference. Um, also in the monitoring category, uh, this was here before as well, but I had these um, GIK acoustic panels that are absolutely vital. Um, as you can see, there's one over here as well. Uh, once we close that door, uh, the ambient noise in the room is much, much better. Also guys, the, uh, the budget in the studio is getting pretty tight. Um, I'm afraid I might have to let my studio assistant go. If you would like and subscribe, that would help out the channel a lot. And uh, maybe we can keep Jelly around. So another addition to the monitoring setup has been these uh, VSX headphones. Um, I'm still using the monitors as my primary uh, mixing tool, of course, but these VSX headphones have been surprisingly interesting. Uh, I'll be posting a full review on those with a lot of uh, thoughts and opinions on how you could use those. Um, then next up, this is also a fairly recent addition. Uh, this is the Behringer Passive Monitor Controller. Um, I believe it's the M Studio monitor controller. And this thing is very, very helpful for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, mixing in mono is a absolutely vital part of the process for me. It helps me avoid phase issues, make sure I'm hearing things properly and make sure, making sure that uh, things will translate properly on multiple listening devices, especially phones. So having a physical toggle for that is extremely helpful. Um, it's also got a mute button on it, which is great. Uh, so I don't have to power down the monitors. If I'm swapping over to headphones, I don't want any background bleed because uh, I use my headphones directly with the Axe FX. Um, it's also got monitor toggles, so you can connect multiple monitor sources, which I may do at some point in the future. And then it's got this really nice tactile uh, volume control knob. So really enjoying that so far. Oh, and as far as this headphone holder, this is something that I made myself. Um, I just kind of jumped on a jigsaw and cut out a rough shape and then used a column sander to basically do all this shaping. But I uh, built this a few years ago and honestly love it. It's super lightweight and uh, it has a pretty simple job to do, but it does it well. Now, as far as computers go, uh, I'm using a custom built Windows machine. That may be the next thing due for an upgrade since uh, I built it several years ago and I could use a bit more processing power, especially with how I'm running some of my plugin chains nowadays. And yeah, we're using uh, Pro Tools for our DAW. So just some computer peripherals um, right here. We've got a uh, HDMI switcher that controls this second monitor here so I can throw on a laptop display up here while I'm using my computer if I want to. Uh, just got a USB dongle so I can turn on the uh, iLock, turn on my uh, keyboard, turn on my uh, MIDI controller if I need to. Um, up here, just got a couple of external hard drives. I always back up all of my mixes and masters on the computer on uh, two external hard drives and online. Very important to back up your files. You spend too long on this stuff not to do it. Then right here, I've got power and uh, USB MIDI control for my keyboard. Uh, just kind of tuck that away there. Over here, I've got an external um, USB-C to HDMI converter, and then just a charging cable for USB-C. Always handy to have one of those right up front because I try and prioritize USB-C charging and uh, displays across the board if I can. Then over here, I've got my custom uh, keyboard with all the Pro Tools shortcuts on it. This thing is really awesome. I got the base keyboard from the uh, store WASD keyboards, and then I just bought one of their custom sets and uh, had those popped on there. But yeah, I love this thing. Uh, I think it adds a lot to the vibe of the studio. It looks really cool when all the lights are shut off. And uh, if you're still learning the shortcuts for your DAW, something like this is super handy. 
And then as we all know, uh, lighting in the studio is very important for setting the atmosphere. So I've got some remote controlled LEDs behind the monitor there. I've got this um, rectangular sort of LED strip that is going around one of the uh, acoustic panels. Then over here, we've got a different remote controlled uh, LED that can change colors. Over here, we've got a bunch of the nerd stuff that's lit up. And then up here, we've got some more neon going on. And overall, there's a lot of lighting control in here, so I can kind of set the atmosphere for whatever I'm looking for. Now, another super important thing that people don't often talk about um, in the studio is your chair. Uh, before this, I had the Autonomous Ergo Chair 2, I believe, and that just really wasn't working for me. Um, I ended up going with sort of the default uh, studio producer chair, which is the Herman Miller Aeron. Got that on eBay and it's incredibly comfortable. I really love it. Now, not strictly a piece of audio gear, but honestly, incredibly important to my workflow is having coffee. Uh, this is actually the Ember mug, which is one of the most ridiculous purchases you can make. It's a mug that costs over $100, but the quality of life improvement is honestly worth it. Uh, if I am not using the Ember mug, I've also got this mug warmer over here, so I can always have a cup of coffee right by my side. So let's talk a little bit about outboard gear. Um, I've got a pretty simple setup here with just four uh, rack slots. This is um, something that I built out of just some pine from Home Depot. I've had this for years now and it works quite well. But uh, up top we've got the Furman power conditioner, the M8X2 uh, or M8X squared. Uh, pretty simple, just a power conditioner to keep everything protected. Um, below that, we've got sort of the main workhorse of the whole thing, which is the AxeFX 2 XL Plus. Um, I've thought about upgrading to the 3, but honestly, the audio quality of the 2 is still fantastic, and I haven't really gotten to a point where I have any needs that aren't met, so I'm not really looking to upgrade at this point. Um, below that, we've got actually the most recent addition to the studio, which is this Warm Audio Tone Beast Black. Uh, or the TB12. Um, this thing is really awesome. I have more testing that I need to do with this. But yeah, this ended up replacing my Behringer uh, mic uh, 2200 that I was using before. Honestly, the quality of this is just light years ahead of that one. Um, so far, I'm really loving this. It adds a really nice color if you want it to, or you can push it to be pretty clean. So I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of experimenting with this, but so far, really happy with it. Now, at some point, I am considering building out another one of these, probably another four slots, maybe six or eight. Um, but at some point, I would like to get some outboard compression gear, maybe a physical uh, tape reverb or something like that. Just uh, some fun stuff to play around with, but at the moment, all my needs are definitely met and we don't really have a lot of space for that at the moment. One other recent addition to the studio that I have not tested out super heavily yet, but uh, am initially happy with is this uh, Slate Digital uh, ML1 microphone. Uh, this is their modeling microphone uh, that comes with some software that allows you to you know, model different uh, microphone types uh, with the same input. So um, yeah, I got this one on Black Friday for a pretty good deal and uh, so far pretty happy with it, but lots of experimenting left to do. Yeah, so that about does it for this edition of the studio tour. Uh, several updates from last time, so I figured it was about time for a new one. Um, but yeah, lots of improvements to the mixing workflow especially. Um, really enjoyed using some of this new stuff uh, when I was mixing my latest EP that I just wrapped up. Um, so overall, very happy with the workflow that I've got in this space at the moment. Uh, as we all know, it's always a slightly ever-changing, ever-evolving workspace, but uh, pretty happy with how things are for now. All right, appreciate you guys taking the time to check out the studio with me, and hope you all have a great day.